Welcome to the lecture of an introduction to agronomy. This lecture is the first lecture in the subject Agronomy 1. This subject is a part of two degrees. The Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, which is a partnership degree with Melbourne Polytechnic and La Trobe University. And the second degree is the Bachelor of Equine Studies. This subject will be separated into two components. In the first six weeks, all student cohorts will learn about the fundamentals of agronomy or growing a plant in a commercial setting. In the second set six weeks, we will have enterprise specific lectures. That is, the equine students will learn about equine pastures, while the agronomy students will learn about cropping and pastures and other enterprises. My name is Dr. Nikki Cooley. For more information about this course and other courses that we offer, please visit our website at www.melbournepolytechnic.edu.au. In this uh, lecture today, we are going to start with a general introduction to agronomy. Why would you study agronomy? I'm then going to explain the approach to teaching that is used in this unit. I will detail what we hope that you will learn and our expectations of the students. There will be a brief introduction and explanation about our timetable and flexible delivery components, as well as some information on the assessments for AGR1, AGR. I'd like to acknowledge Tony Kent. Tony Kent has contributed significantly to the development of this subject over the last few years. He has provided some material. Tony Kent is a consultant for the company Ask Advisors. He is also a director of this company. What is agronomy? Well, the word agronomy comes from the French word agronomie, which is derived from the agronomon or agronomist. It is taken from the ancient Greek words agros, meaning field, and the nomos, meaning laws or rules. The definition of agronomy that we will be using during this course is that agronomy is the science and technology of producing and using plants for food, fuel, fibre and natural resource management. It is important to note that this discipline is science based. This means that the knowledge we present is based on collective evidence from the scientific literature. Therefore a fact or theory presented in the subject will be supported by scientific principle. The word scientific is used a lot in our society and the context or meaning of the word can vary greatly. In higher education, what we usually mean by scientific principle is that what we have applied with the scientific method. So the scientific method is a rigorous and long drawn out process. It begins with an idea. Say, I think I will be able to grow better wheat if I add more water at the seedling stage. A hypothesis is then developed, and in our example, this would be higher yields will be achieved from applying, say, 0.2 mils per hectare of irrigation water at stage 12, based on the Zodax et al. 1974 decimal scale. As you will note, this idea is very general, whereas the hypothesis has become very specific. Once we have a hypothesis, we will design experimentation. In agronomy, that is usually plot or field trials. This, these trials will test our hypothesis. In science, it is very difficult to prove a fact, but it is easy to not prove something is correct. That is why in science, we develop what we call a null hypothesis. This is where we turn around the positive and test a negative. This can be a complicated idea for some, and you will learn more about this process throughout your degrees. During the field trials, we will collect data. The data will then be subjected to, to appropriate statistical testing, and the outcome, if used here, will demonstrate the findings or fact is robust or not. Therefore, if we accept the fact is robust, we say we reject the null hypothesis and accept an alternative hypothesis in this case, our original statement. 
In this discipline, we usually test hypotheses in several locations and across several species before we apply it to farming processes. So, to summarise, we use science and the scientific principle in this subject. Agronomy is the application or combination of many sciences. For example, in agronomy we will study aspects of biology, chemistry, economics, ecology, earth science and plant genetics, plant physiology, meteorology and soil science. There may even be bioformatic statistics and organisation management. These can all be applied to agronomy. There are lots of reasons why you might study agronomy. For a start, all agricultural systems are underpinned by plants, whether this is directly by the growing of a crop or indirectly by the use of a plant in an animal, fish or feed scenario. It is essential, for, therefore, um, to many enterprises. In theory, in order to optimise your commercial outputs, say for the best wine or beef production, or to run the best horses, understanding how, to, how a plant grows and develops will significantly contrib contribute to your agricultural endeavours. This subject aims to explore the fascinating and complex worlds of plants. It will be an introduction it will be an introduction on how plants grow and how they develop. The content of this subject, as I stated before, is evidence-based, where knowledge has been gained through research and experimentation and has been tested extensively. I think it is a fair statement to say that agronomy is very important. In fact, I think I could go one step farther and say that it is absolutely essential for the successful ev evolution and development of mankind. You can think of agronomy as a higher calling of the service of mankind. You may think this is an overstatement, but seriously, it is such an important job to feed people and agronomy is required for every part of the food chain. This has been noted by famous people. For example, we have a king here who stated the, his thoughts on agronomy. That whatever could make two ears of corn or two blades of grass to grow upon a spot of ground where only one grew before would deserve better of mankind and do more essential service to his country than the whole race of politicians put together. On a personal note, I will resist the urge to reflect on the value of politicians in our community. On a more serious note, our world faces massive challenges in feeding 9 billion humans. At least this is the projected global population in 2050. All of this we must do in the face of static or declining food crops, limited resources, and many of these resources we compete with other enterprises. If you then add in resource limitations with respect to climate change, you have some significant challenges. The world and in Australia is witnessing ongoing loss of arable land to settlement and degradation. For further information on this topic, you can refer to the Global Harvest Initiative fourth annual GAP report, which is freely available on the internet in the link on your notes. This was written by Simonon and Reed in 2014 and describes why international development in agriculture matters. This reading is not compulsory, but it is an interesting read. It is a profession that offers opportunity to work in a wide range of specialities and careers, as well as industries that can take you all over the world. But let us see, what does Wikipedia say? It is stated in Wikipedia that an agronomist today are involved with many issues including producing food, creating healthier food, managing environmental impact on agriculture and extracting energy from plants. Agronomists can specialise in areas such as crop rotation, irrigation and drainage, 
plant breeding, plant physiology, soil classification, soil fertility, weed control and insect and pest control. Agronomy students may wish to consider careers in a, in a farm management advisory position or as agro-business managers, commodity marketers, input retailers, seed growers and biosecurity inspectors. There are a range of careers in agronomy that is not the central position but the knowledge of how a, a plant grows is important. For example, such enterprises are a dairy manager who has the permanent pasture, the manager of an equine facility, chemical sales representative, farm loan officers and advisors, and even wetland soil scientists. So how will I study for this subject? Well, your first port of call, as for all of your subjects, is the use of the website Moodle. This is run by Melbourne Polytechnic. Please go into Melbourne Polytechnic and click on the Moodle sign. There is an image on the slide. It's a big M with a hat on it. Once you click here, you can use your student identification and the assigned password to enter Moodle. In Moodle, we will cover communications such as email and news. It is your responsibility to check these regularly and this will be the main form of communication for this subject. You will also be able to see lectures and lecture videos. Occasionally there will be Moodle quizzes to, with associated topics. You will also see tutorials here. This subject has some experimentation. The experimentation or practicals which are part of the assessments will be conducted in two parts. The first is a series of experiments you will conduct in a DIY or do-it-yourself style. One such experiment will demonstrate the concepts of, of uh, seed germination. At the start of this subject you will be provided with some plants and it will be your job to keep them alive. You will use the knowledge that you have gained in this subject to help with that. You will conduct some simple experiments with your plants. You may also note that this subject can be taught in two instances or pathways. We will start the first half of this subject which will cover agronomical fundamentals. That is, all the principles you need to know about growing a plant commercially. In the second part, you will apply these fundamental principles to specific enterprises. On average, a student studying this subject should timetable between 8 and 10 hours per week. In this time, you will learn by listening to lectures, participating in tutorials, reading, completing short quizzes on Moodle, and undertaking practical exercises, your DIY prax, and a field trip. There is a number of readings that are associated with this subject. I have included a snapshot screen of the agronomical site in the Moodle webpage. For studying the subject AGR1, AGR or Agronomy 1 as part of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, you may do this subject as a flexible delivery pathway. But please note this pathway is not available for students in the Equine Studies degree studying subject BES 224. For the flexible delivery pathway I require that you register with me. This is simple, you just send an email requesting that you would like to do this subject. Please put Agronomy 1 in the uh, email title so that I may search the emails easily. In the Agronomy flexible delivery, you will learn all of the student learning outcomes. You will do the DIY practical. You will still be required to come to the WEED workshop on the 7th of April this year. Look to completely success, successfully complete this subject. I require that you have the following. Access to a computer and the internet. If you do not have these, you will need to make some time to come in to either the Latrobe Libraries or the Melbourne Polytechnic Libraries. You will need access to Moodle and your Melbourne Polytechnic emails. You will require a laboratory coat, safety glasses, pens, pencils, erasers, rulers and an exercise book that is suitable for the outdoor environment. 
I recommend obtaining a fine tip permanent marker and keeping it with you on all pracs. Closed shoes are required for all laboratory and field work. If you are on industrial placement or on the farm, I ask that you adhere to all of the OHS requirements that enterprise requires. For those with long hair, it is preferable that your hair is tied up, as that way it is safer. Access to a calculator is advisable. This can be either via your laptop, computer or calculator. I ask also that when you turn up to your practicals and your field day and any trips on the farm, that you use your powers of observation. Take some time to look at the environment and learn from it. There are some recommended textbooks that are required for the fundamental component of the subject. I don't suggest you go out and buy these unless you want to be an agronomist. If you do intend to be an agronomist, may I say that the interpreting soil test results is a must. I recommend that you have access to the crib, the coming famine, integrated pest management for crops and pastures by Horn and Page, and the designer of experiments for agriculture and natural sciences by Hoshmud in 2006. 2007 is a good textbook that will enable you to understand about productivity growth in the Australian agricultural environment. Price 2006 is a textbook on soil fertility which is centred around the Australian environment and Richardson et al in 2011 is a good text on the weeds of South East Australia. It is an identification guide and will be very useful. And the last textbook on the recommended reading is that of Pests of Field for Crops and Pastures. This is specifically for the agronomy students and may not be as relevant for the equine students. As well as the re recommended textbooks, you will find there are other readings for this subject. You will see lecture notes on Moodle, tutorial exercises, practical books and journal articles associated with topics. In the flexible learning format, time management is essential. I want to bring it to your attention that about 10 hours of study per week is required for this subject. During these 10 hours, you will watch lectures, you will com uh, complete the associated Moodle quizzes where there are some, read the literature that's recommended. There will be some tutorials and workshops and practicals. There is also some discussions on lecture and tasks. I will be communicating via email with the flexible delivery cohort. In this, I hope to, where possible, routinely catch up with this cohort. For everybody in the subject, whether you are face to face or whether you are flexible delivery, whether you're in agronomy one or you're in the equine pathway, you will be required to attend the WEED practical. This is on the 7th of May 2016. Please note it is at the Yang Ying farm and it is a whole day. We have also organised a visit to Rights and Seeds Pastor Research in Bendigo. I highly recommend that you pencil some time in to participate in this industry visit. This is on the 28th of April 2016. It will be a whole, whole day and we will be leaving from the Epping campus. For the subject AGR1, AGR1 or Agronomy 1, there are a number of assessments. There is a crop management plan. You will be required to select a theoretical crop. We will be doing this over the first couple of weeks. The second component to this assessment is practical assessments. They, like the crop management plan, are worth 30% of the subject's weighting. There will be a number of practicals. First is a DIY practical. This will be on seed germination. The second is a nutrition practical. You will be asked to write this up and hand it in. Thirdly, there will be a pest and weed collection assessment. This will be coupled with the Yang Ying Farm workshop. 
You can start all, um, this assessment before the workshop, but most of the work will be required after the workshop. <clears throat> and finally, there will be a tutorial assessment worth 10% and at the end of the exam, a two hour written assessment. Please note that for the subject BES 224, the assessments will be slightly different. However, both cohorts will be completing a weed collection. The equine students will be given more details of their assessments by Heather. For those students who have not studied before, we do supply for some assessments a document called an assessment rubric. May I suggest that this rubric is quite important as it is a detailed description on the scoring or the marking scheme that we will apply to each assessment. This can be used to help you get a better understanding of your grades and how you may improve them in future. All rubrics where available will be on Moodle. With respect to assessment feedback, you will get that in a number of ways through this sub subject. There will be feedback from quizzes. The quizzes are on Moodle and the feedback is instantaneous. They are a good guide to see whether you are understanding the topics or not. As a rule of thumb, students who do the quizzes and get 80% on their last attempt will tend to pass the, the subject and pass it with a good grade. Feedback will come from your, to, from your crop management plan and your practical write-ups. I aim to have all feedback within two weeks of the hand-in date. Please note, if any extension is given, then feedback cannot be guaranteed within the two weeks. Your health and safety is essential during this subject. Therefore, please note, closed toe shoes are required for all practicals, field trips and other farm visits. Without this protective clothing, you will not be allowed to attend the, the class for occupational health and safety reasons. On high UV index day, you will be required to wear hats and bring a water container and it is strongly advised that you wear long sleeve shirts, sunglasses, trousers and suntan lotion to protect you from the exposed skin. On cold and wet days, it is advised you wear warm weather, wind and rainproofing clothing. If you live in the city and you come out on a field trip, while it may be quite pleasant in the city, it can be quite exposed on some of our field trips. Gloves, hats and scarves are recommended for those cooler days. On all farm visits and outings, you will be asked to bring your adequate food and drink for the timetabled period we are away. Lastly, you can get assistance in a number of ways. There will be tutorials and workshops throughout this subject. You can schedule a time with your lecturers, that is myself or Heather. If you need to contact me, it's best to email me first. If I haven't responded within three working days, then please send me another email. If you are in the equine cohort and you are having some issues, you are more than welcome to contact the coordinator, Louise. That brings us to the end of this lecture. I look forward to meeting you all and teaching you about the fundamentals of agronomy.